Britain, and this is my husband. Deacon Pamela Britton. And we are two of the founding members here at Love Fellowship Church. <laughs> we are so excited and we're so happy that you decided to come out and celebrate with us as we celebrate our 15th anniversary. So make yourself at home and let's just worship God together this morning. and around the world or whether you're non-denominational non-traditional I would say as, as, as the word of God tells us in Proverbs the third chapter trust in the Lord because he is the one that leads he is the one that guides I'm reminded of Mark the 11th chapter where, where Jesus says my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations it's not that we own anything we are stewards of God's house as leaders, as pastors, as fivefold ministry giftings. And if we can keep that perspective, keep things in the proper place and proper order, I am not the owner of Love Fellowship Church. God is. This is God's house. Hi, I'm Pastor Anthony Williams. And I'm Pastor Renee Williams. And we're just so excited to talk to you about Love Fellowship Church's 15th anniversary. And we wanted to talk about the genesis of it all. Yes, it started in October of 2008 at the Holiday Inn off of Harris Boulevard. Wow, it seems like a lifetime away, Pastor Renee. Yes. But I remember eight people going in and starting Love Fellowship Church. And look where we are now at the new location, 5535 Statesville Road the house that God has built for his glory and for his honor. And we're just so excited to be able to share with you a portion 
of what God has done over the last 15 years. And uh, I have the privilege of also, as being a consecrated bishop over the RB People's Ministry, where we have had the awesome privilege to work with Pastor Anthony and Renee Williams. They first came to Faith Outreach Church over 24 years ago. Pastor Anthony at that time was deacon. Anthony William and Renee was sister Renee William and I watched them grow I watched them have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness and by the grace of God the call of God was very prevalent on their lives Pastor Anthony went from a deacon to a licensed minister Matter of fact, I licensed him in ministry, and he began to collaborate with us at Faith Outreach Church, working in different departments, and in the process of time, uh, my board of elders agreed that Pastor Anthony should be elevated to an ordained elder, and we actually took him through a uh, catechism board and uh, he actually did exceptionally well that all of the elders on the board agree that he was very much qualified uh, to be elevated to the office of elder and of course in the process of time Pastor Renee eventually became a board member she was part of our local church board Throughout my time at LSC, I've learned a lot of things I can apply to my life, especially going to college. One big thing I learned is the being able to service, being able to, you know, volunteer, service with my hand out for others in need. That's one thing I definitely want to take me when I go out to college this fall. My name is Ricky Howell. And my name is Olympia Howell. I have known Pastor Renee for, I'm going to say, 30 plus years. Um, the journey started, uh, I was probably in high school, and she was actually dating my brother. Um, and from there, our relationship began to grow. Uh, I can remember times that we would, the earlier stages, she would come to the house, uh, to our home, and I have three other sisters, and she, we would end up in our bedroom just talking and laughing and just going over every day-to-day -day pressures of life that you go through. And at the time, I don't think Renee, she went to church, but she wasn't born again yet. She hadn't made a confession of her faith. And so through our relationship with me and my family, because it was basically through my family that I believe that we uh, reconnected her walk with Christ, and it began to grow even more. We have known each other that long and have stayed connected, even though her and my brother's relationship did not last. Our friendship and our familyship just continued to grow. So she's a part of the family. I consider her my, my oldest sister because I'm the oldest girl, so she's like the oldest sister to me. And so it brings just, a, just the joy of knowing that she has gone from the stage of being born again and now pastoring a, a church that has been going for 15 years, and I'm so excited to be a part of that journey with her. The relationship with uh, Pastor Anthony and Pastor Renee is, I can just remember when I met them through my wife, and I can remember when they came to our house personally. And uh, they have always been like ministering to us in our lives. They told us to set some goals, and I'll never forget this, on our refrigerator, right out the vision of what you want for your life and your walk with Christ. And we did that, and we wrote it, and we seen some things actually take place the minute we started trusting God more, but just their influence on us, uh, bringing it outside the church into our home to tell us what we could accomplish was a big goal. And I just really uh, adore those, those two couples right there and what they presented to us as far as with the highway. So when I think about the impact that we have made or the ministry has made over the last 15 years, I can't help but think of Karen Elaine Tate. Yeah. And how we met her almost at the genesis of the ministry. But it was unique because we met her in the hospital at a time when she was going through a, a very challenging 
uh, time in her body and in her life. And we saw God perform a miracle in Elaine's life. Yes. In fact, God healed her body. Well, the doctor said that she would not live. She lived many, many more years beyond what the doctors even said. Mm -hmm. And the impact that she made on our lives in Love Fellowship Church's life is immeasurable. Because of her faithfulness and because of how she loved people, she even served in her capacity at, from her home. She was homebound, but she always reached out to everyone on Facebook. She wished everyone a happy birthday. She would uh, participate on, in Bible study, and she would always greet everybody by saying, Hello, family. Love you. She really exemplified Love Fellowship Church by showing love to everyone she met. And as a result, after her death, after she transitioned to heaven, we named our fellowship hall after Karen Elaine Tate. Yes. I'd like to talk a little bit about how Love Fellowship has impacted the community. And I'll start with the scripture. In Colossians 3 and 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. This scripture embodies what Love Fellowship does in the Charlotte community. We've done so many things uh, in the community. With outreach, we have ministered to men and women in shelters. We have a street outreach ministry. We've given children school supplies. We've ministered to teachers and some of the local elementary schools. And um, we also do giveaways um, at Thanksgiving and different times. We give giveaway, do giveaways of food, of clothing, and we've helped people with shelter. So we have really taken this scripture to heart um, at the hand of our leaders here at the church. So the things that I do on the production team at church, I um one I help out with the camera, so I angle the camera um, and zoom in, focus, all that type of stuff. I also um, be on the computer, making sure the live is okay, everything situated, the slideshows pop up. Um, I really do enjoy it. I love doing it. Um, I'm glad I'm doing something for the church. Um, I've basically been through. I've been through. Everything I've been seeing, choir dance, all that. So I'm glad this is another way for me to help um, church out. Pastor Renee and Pastor Anthony, I love you both so much. You both have been spiritual parents to me um, in the midst of me not having both of my parents here. You guys have shown me the a tremendous amount of love, more love than I can even explain. I thank God for you both and I give God all the glory for bringing you both into my life. I thank you both for just all your prayers, all the nights you stayed up praying for me, encouraging me, just always looking out for me in every way possible. Thank you for all that you've done um, and for God just allowing God to use you to play such an important role in my life and in my daughter's life. And I'm not gonna get emotional. Hi, my name is Anaya Cooks McNair, and I'm a member of the Children's Church slash La Fellowship Church. My favorite scripture slash lesson was the fishes of men, and I got to learn so much about the Lord Jesus. Recently, we had fun for Sunday, and my uncle Wayne, he was cooking. He was on the grill. My little cousin Olive got to come, and we got to have snow coat, and we got to um, play musical chairs tug of war and it was like the great the, um, the most fun time i had at church this year i love pastor Anthony and pastor renee they always pray for my, me and my mom and our family they always encourage us and they always look out for us and make sure we got what we need and for my birthday they're gonna take me out to eat if god is giving you a ministry or a vision to build something and do something great for him Follow the instructions. 
God is so good about giving meticulous instructions. And all we need to do is to submit ourselves to those instructions. He gave Nehemiah instructions on how to build and wall. He told him who he needed to link up with. He gave Noah instructions on how to build the ark. And even though he was alone in his efforts, God never left his side. So always follow the instructions. Remember, if it's God's vision, it's God's provision. And we often say, if, if it's, it's God's, God's will, will, it's God's bill. bill. So submit yourself to the instructions. Know why that you're doing it, because you're going to make God's name great. And I often say, Check your motives. Yes. Make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it for the glory. purpose, the glory and purpose of God. Yes. To advance God's kingdom. Over the last 15 years of ministry, our motives have had to be checked many, many times yes. to make sure that how we treat people, how we treat one another, mm -hmm. and how we treat our family, how we treat Love Fellowship Church, is pure before God. Yes. And you want to do everything that you do to your to your very best to please God. I can certainly say that we're so proud of you. We're so happy for you. And this is such an auspicious occasion for you. And we are so thankful to be able to share each and every moment with you. And we wish you 15 more years and 10 more years and however many more years that you have that you continue to prosper and grow wherever God will take you. And you know that you have the support of our family 100%. The only regret that we have is that our parents are not here to share it with you because I know that mom and dad would be so proud of you and Pastor Anthony, your father, would be certainly proud of you to see how your church has grown, to see how you have grown as a pastor and a father. And so I'm so sorry that he is not here, but I am just so thankful that we're here to give you the love and support that you so richly deserve and that you will continue to grow as you continue to go higher and higher in the Lord, as you continue to serve him in the way that you do. May God bless you and I will.
glory. We celebrate you, oh God. Oh, Father, in you are the Father of glory, oh God. We see your glory. Because Father of glory, you're Father of
and showing himself approved, rightly dividing the word of God. I can say that for him. One of the best people I know, and I like to just say from the bottom of my heart, man, we love you, and we, we just we continue to hope God prosper your ministry. All the way from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Kingdom, life, worship, center, of Maine. None other than Pastor Robert Walsh. And I, I just want to add a few points to what my husband has said. Pastor Rob Walston has been very integral in this ministry. Amen. I think he joined with us during our first year. He was one of the first praise team leaders. It was he and Pastor Renee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were leading praise and worship. Then he became a deacon, a minister, um, and then he worked. He's been on the board for a long time. Oh, yeah. He continued to work with our board as we built the sanctuary, even after he had moved to Elizabeth City. Um, he's an awesome man of God, and we were actually privileged to be there when he married his beautiful wife, Pastor Amen. Tammy Walston. Amen. She had become a member, and they Amen. connected here at Love Fellowship, Amen. Amen. and now they're pastoring oh, in yes. Elizabeth City, North oh, yes. Carolina. Oh, yes. So it is an honor and a blessing to introduce Pastor Amen. Rob Walston. Yes. Oh, glory be to God. It is for his glory. Amen. It is. Might not feel like it. Hallelujah. 15 years ain't easy. Hallelujah. But when God is in it, it doesn't matter what come against you. But when God is in it, you can give him the glory. When God is in it, you can praise him. When God is in it, you can stand in the midst of the fire. See, when God is in it, hallelujah, you know if God be for you, who can be against you? So it's not hard. Hallelujah, to give him glory. Hallelujah, come on and raise your hands. We're just going to continue worshiping in his presence. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We glorify you, God. You're just that magnificent. You're just that wonderful. You're just that awesome, oh God, and we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be.
you are. Yes, God, I want to be where you are. Jesus, you got to be where you are. Yes, God, I want to be where you are. got to be there. Gotta be
glory. Ah, my, my, my. I tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited to be back home. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I count it an honor. I count it a privilege to be back in this house. I'm telling you, I miss the connection. But I'm still don't no, I'm still connected now. Don't think I'm not connected. This is still my house too. This is our house. And we are still connected to this house. And I just thank God just for this opportunity to be able to come and share with you on this glorious occasion. 15 years. 15 years. And look what the Lord has done. See, this is not what Pastor Anthony and Pastor Renee has done. This is what the Lord has done. And because it's what the Lord has done, it is marvelous. It's marvelous in his eyes. Because this is his work. And because this is his work, <laughs> you can get the victory. You can get the victory. Because this is not their work. <laughs> See, if it, their, if, it, it was, if it was their work, you couldn't get no victory. But because it's his work, You can get the victory. So we thank God. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise on today. Oh, celebrate him again on today. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Oh, take your seats if you can. Glory. Hallelujah. Again. I give honor to everyone here in the house. I don't know everyone here now because I see new faces in the house. But it's good to be back in this house again. I give honor to the shepherds of this house, the angels of this house, Pastor Anthony and Pastor Renee. Yes, give it up for him. Give it up for him. The Bible says those that serve well are worthy. They're worthy of double honor. And you have shepherds that are truly worthy of double honor. They are worthy. Because these 15 years haven't been easy for them. There's been trials, there have been tribulations huh, that they've had the, they, they had the face. But in it all, God got the glory. God got the glory. So we give him praise on today. Glory to the Lamb of God. There is a word for today, and there is a word for the house. So we're going to open up in prayer, and we're going to say, thus says the Lord. Father, we just bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for your presence. <laughs> oh, glory to your name. Father, have your way. Holy Spirit, continue to move in this house. 
You have free course to do what you see fit to do in this house. Allow me to get out of the way. Allow me to decrease that you may increase in me. Let your word come forth with yoke destroying power that the lives of the hearers will be changed forevermore, Father. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. You know, we don't always understand why things happen in our lives. We have times when things are just going great. And man, we're comfortable. We love. How life is going. And then all of a sudden, things start to get uncomfortable. You're on your job, man, you had all kind of favor with your boss. And then all of a sudden, it's like something shifted. And that favor is not there no more. And, and where you loved your job, now you're ready to go. Because it's a struggle. It seems like the people that, 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 that once were with you, are now against you. And the struggle is real. Doors that were open to you, they seem to be closing all around you. And there are times, there are times when things are not going the way you hoped they would go, that you are in that that you are in a season where you're not comfortable. Because we want to be comfortable. We like it when things are going good. We don't like it when things ain't going well in our lives. And see, when things, are, when things are not going well, the first person we want to blame is the enemy, the devil. But every door that closes in your life don't come from the enemy. So you can't blame the devil for everything. You can blame him for a lot of things, but you can't blame him for everything. See, there are times when God will shake things up in your life. He will shake things up. Because you get to the point where you are too comfortable. And God says, I got to shake something up in your life. Because you done got too comfortable where you at. And you can't move on. Until I get you uncomfortable. So there are times when God will shake things up. You may suffer a job loss. You may have someone. That don't like you. That curse you out. That's trying to drive a knife in your back. God uses loss. He uses portrayal. He uses persecution. 
to push you in the direction he wants you to go. I'm just not saying these things just to be saying it. I'm saying these things is that because this is what I have lived and experienced. Yes, I've experienced job loss. And not only job loss, I experienced loss of everything. So I'm not up here just saying something to be saying it. This is real for me. Because it's been, it has been. It's not my life now, but it was my life at one point. So every door, every door that's closed in your life is not a bad thing. And every person that walks away is not a mistake. See, God knows we wouldn't move without a push. When everything is good and we're comfortable, we don't want to have to stretch. We don't want to have to step out into the unknown. So whatever bad breaks you've had, it wasn't meant to stop you. It was meant to push you. It was meant to mature you. It was meant to make you stronger. So God allows things. He will shake up things in your life to prepare you to fulfill the purpose that he has for your life. And some of y'all need to be shook up because you done got too comfortable. <laughs> Sometimes we pray against the very thing God has ordained to happen in our life. I was not one that wanted to be standing in this position. I ran from it because I didn't want it. I didn't want to be no pastor. I didn't want to be no minister. For one, I didn't think I had it in me. But God knew. And I wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for these two that God here that God put in my life, I wouldn't be standing here right now. So what I'm sharing with you today, <laughs> what I'm going to be sharing is something that I have lived. We're praying against what God has set into motion. See, again, the enemy don't close every door. Sometimes God closes doors. And he closes it for your good. Even though at the time you may not see that it is good. <laughs> but he closes doors for your own good. God, he moves people out of your life. Because he knows they'll become a crutch to you. And they will keep you from fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. Yeah. 
So quit being depressed over someone that walks away out of your life. Quit being depressed. If they left your life, their time was up. So we get depressed over stuff that God said, look, I moved them out of your life because they weren't meant to be in your life. It's time to move on. So quit being depressed. Huh. When God moves things out of your life. Step into your new season because you're about to be pushed into your purpose. You, you're about to see new growth. You're about to see new opportunities. You're about to see new friendships because your victory is on purpose. Your victory is on purpose. So just for a few minutes, that's what I want to talk to you about on today. Your victory is on purpose. Now, I believe the theme for, you, for this year is victory. And y'all theme scripture is 1 John 5 and 4. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified. It says, for everyone born of God is victorious. And overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God. Also look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 in the Amplified. It says, now that I have already obtained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or I have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my, that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Your victory is on purpose. So my first point, I only got two points for you. But my first point, God created you to be victorious. God created you to be victorious. See, a synonym for the word victory is win. Win. See, Vince Lombardi, who was a legendary uh, coach for the Green Bay Packers, to, you, to all of your uh, sports fans, he had this famous saying. He said, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. So God created you to be a winner. And not just spiritually. He created you to be a winner financially, professionally, and in your health. In every area of your life, God created you to be a winner. Look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We all know this scripture. 
Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, we know God don't make no mistakes, and we know God is victorious, so we know he's a winner. He's a winner. So if man was made in God's image and likeness, then redeemed man must have been designed to be a winner too. In fact, after God made Adam and Eve, guess what he told them to do? He told them to go win. He told them to go win. Look at Genesis 1 and 28. It says, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So in other words, he told them, go win. Go win. So your victory is on purpose because God created you to win. Now, we're going to look at this at two ways. Because, see, the world has a way of winning, too. See, the, according to the world's way of thinking, when one wins, it means Everybody else loses. See, that's the world's way of thinking. It's an, it's an exclusive mentality. And it implies the domination of others. See, that's the world's way. But God's concept of winning is different because everybody wins in God's system. Everybody wins. See, God never created you to dominate another human being. He never created you to dominate somebody else. He created you to dominate circumstances. See, too many of us, we spend too much time trying to dominate somebody else instead of dominating the circumstances in our lives. And if you don't believe it, look at Ephesians. Chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So your fight is not a fleshly fight. Your fight is it's against, uh, it's against the forces and circumstances that come up in your life. Now, that may come from an individual, but your, your fight is not with the individual. See, believers who are victorious in Christ realize that even though another person may seem to be behind a negative circumstance in their life, that person is not the root of the problem. They understand that God hasn't promised them dominion over people. But he has guaranteed them dominion over circumstances. In their lives. So it's those forces and circumstances that real 
winners put under their feet. And I want to give you a prime example. Because this weekend has been a weekend of circumstances that my wife and I have had to face <laughs> on this weekend. So on this past Friday, we went out to eat with a, another couple. And as we were at the table, we were enjoying ourselves. We were laughing. And we were just have a good, having a good old time, just sitting there eating. And all of a sudden, this lady, she comes over to the table. And, and she leaned over and she said, y'all sure, y'all really are having a lot of fun over here. Seems like y'all having a, 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 a good time over here. And we looked at her, and we, and we kept on laughing, we, we, and we kept on smiling at her. And then all of a sudden, she just sat down and went to a seat. But that wasn't the end of it. So we didn't ignore her. We, we acknowledged her. By smiling and, 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 and laughing, but in our minds, we really wasn't paying attention to what she was saying because we wasn't going to allow what, what, uh, what she was trying to imply <laughs> to make us get in a position where we, gonna, where we was going to get in the flesh. Because we could have got in our flesh saying, what you mean? Well, yes, we, 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 yes, we're having a good time over here. What's wrong with it? But we didn't go that direction. No, we kept on smiling. We had a smile on our face. And eventually she, she got the point, okay, I need to go sit down. But as we got up to leave... Well, before we get that, before I get there, before before she got up, she because her her and her husband was sitting. They weren't sitting directly across from us, but they were sitting at the next table, uh, in, in in front. Her and her husband, and she was sitting around with a frown on her face. And I guess she wasn't. She didn't like the fact that we were enjoying ourselves because it seemed like she wasn't enjoying her time with her husband. Because he had his, he, he was all in his plate. I mean, that chicken must have been finger licking good to him because he was all in that plate. You would have thought, I mean, uh, like he was like he was eating that chicken. You would have thought he killed that chicken himself. Because he was in that chicken. But as we were about to leave, they looked over at us, we looked over at them and, 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 and smiled. And then her husband said, finally, we can get some peace and quiet. We looked over them, we looked over at them, we laughed, and we went out, and, we, and as we went out, we were still smiling and laughing. Because we refuse to allow the enemy to make us get in our flesh and do something that we would have regretted later on and lose our witness.
See, that's why you don't fight with flesh and blood. Because when you fight, try to fight against flesh and blood, what kind of victory are you going to get? And what kind of victory is God going to get? See, God could get the victory in the in our situation because we didn't get it in our flesh. Because we kept it moving. We kept a smile on our face and we kept it moving. So ultimately, they were the ones that looked bad. We didn't look bad, even though they tried to, to talk down against us. But many people would have left that restaurant. I mean, they'd have been all fired up, and they would say, I ain't never coming back here again. All because they allow the enemy to come in and allow them to lose the victory that God has purposed for them to win. See, that's why I said God will make you uncomfortable. He will make you uncomfortable. He will shake you up at times to see where you are. Because you can't truly get victory if you can't get past a certain point in your life. See, a lot, of, so a lot of us, we have to repeat things because we meet, keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And God has said, I purposed you to win. Why are you not winning? I purposed you to be victorious. What's, what's wrong? Why are you repeating this cycle when I'm trying to get you to see that I got a purpose for your life? And in order for you to fulfill what I want you to fulfill, you got to move from this situation. So many of us, we need to take a look at ourselves, examine our lives. Okay, what is it, God? What is it that, keep, that is keeping me here at this point when I know you want me to move on? So don't get stuck when somebody don't like you. Don't get stuck. When they talking about you. Because God, he purposed you. He purposed you to win on purpose. Second point. How do we walk in victory? How do we walk in victory? See, it's one thing to know that God wants you to be victorious. But it's, it's another thing to walk in that victory. See, the apostle Paul, he was a man that lived a victorious life. Though Paul, he experienced many difficulties in his life, he never lived under his circumstances. Instead, he lived above them and controlled them. So let's look back at Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 14. It says, now that I have already obtained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may hold, take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I, have that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul knew he had been taken hold of by God. When God grabbed him on Damascus Road 
and told him, look, you are, you are, not, on, you are not no longer going to be on the enemy's team, but you're going to be on my team. Because I'm taking hold of you now. And Paul didn't resist it. See, when God tries to take a hold of you, you shouldn't resist what God's trying to do. Because he's trying to put you on the winning side. He's trying to put you in a place of victory. So Paul... He knew he had not achieved it or he had not arrived yet. And none of us have arrived yet. None of us have arrived to that place where God is trying to take us. But we're moving forward in that if you are a believer, you are moving forward into fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. So Paul said, no, I haven't arrived yet. And we should all have that same attitude. But Paul, but, but Paul finally said, he said, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, in this sentence, there are four terms that represent the keys to walking in victory and finding and fulfilling God's purpose, destiny for your life. The first one is press on. The second is goal. The third is prize. And the fourth is upward calling. So to walk in victory, you must press on. Now to press on to me means to move forward and take possession of a goal and future. So in order to walk in victory, you must press on toward a particular goal. And many believers are being misdirected. They press on toward the wrong goal. And they never walk in victory. Then others are not pressing on at all. They're not doing nothing. They're not even thinking of trying to make an attempt to reach their goal. And they are unwilling to put in the effort needed to reach it. So when a person truly believes in something, they move forward to take possession of it. When you truly believe in it. So if you don't believe that your effort is going to be rewarded with a worthy result... You'll never press, you'll never press long enough or hard enough to arrive at the goal. Because whatever the goal is you have for your life, that God has set for your life, it's not going to be easy. You're going to be faced with obstacles and opposition. But you got to press on. You got to press on. See, those who walk in victory realize the importance of fulfilling their divine destiny because they realize it comes with a prize worthy for pressing for. To walk in victory, you must see your goal. You must see your goal. Paul said, I press toward the goal. In the King James Version, it says, I press toward the mark. So the goal is something that is set out by God as a purpose for your life. It is a pattern set by him that we should be striving to achieve every day of our lives. Whether it be spiritual growth, emotional wellness, or physical health, the goal is what you set your sights on. You see your goal through prayer. You see your goal through seeking guidance 
from God every day. You see your goal by reading the word of God, by being obedient to his commands. You see your goal by doing small acts of kindness or service to others. If you focus on the goal and move toward it, you will stay on course. But you got to remain focused on the goal. The dream that God has placed in your heart may not be well defined enough for you to know what to do next. But God, but the more you stay focused on God and his word, his dream for you will come into view. See, you can't see it all of a sudden. But when you keep pressing on and pressing into God, the more it will begin to come into view where God is trying to take you. To walk in victory, you must obtain the prize. The prize is eternal life. The ultimate reward of the believer is to receive eternal life in God's presence in heaven. But watch this. God also wants you to experience, to experience life here on earth. So the prize in heaven is eternal life. But the prize on earth is living life. And there are too many of us that are here right now. We are not living life. Yes, we're looking forward to eternal life. But God says, I want you to live life while you're here on earth. So to really experience the fullness of life on this side of heaven, you must lay hold to God's upward calling. See, your upward calling is God's perfect will for your life. It is your divine te destiny, and it touches every area of your existence. It touches your vocation. It touches your relationships. It touches uh, 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 your health, your well-being, as well as material wealth. See, God don't want you to be here on earth and you don't have nothing. That ain't what he purpose for you, for you in life. And that's not winning. If God purposed you to win, that means he wants you to win in everything. And this is for everybody. <laughs> See, everybody can win when you're on God's side. Because you don't think like the world. God's outward calling is a place of all sufficiency. It's a place of great influence. It's a prize worth pressing toward. But in order to arrive, you must direct your press toward the right goal. So Paul, he stayed focused. He stayed focused on the goal. And when Paul reached the end of his life, this is what he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 8. Reading this in the New Living Translation. He said, as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day of his return. So Paul, he lived his life to the fullest. 
he emptied himself. See, you don't want to leave this, this, this earth realm full. God didn't purpose you to leave this, this earth realm full. He purposed you to leave here empty. See, yes, Paul went through many struggles and trials and tribulations. But he got victory in all of them. See, when it, com when it comes to the end of your days, you should know that my time is about to go in. See, Paul knew his time was, was, was up. He knew his time was up. And he could say, I fought the good fault. I, 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 I finished my, the race. I remained faithful. He could say that at the end of his life. Because he had fulfilled all that God wanted him to do. He was empty. See, when you empty, ain't nothing else left to do but to go on to be with the Lord. When you're empty. But it's too many that are leaving here that are full. They didn't, they didn't empty themselves. So you can't walk in real victory if you don't empty yourself. Your victory is on purpose because God, he, he has designed you to fulfill whatever it is he's purposed for you to do. So Paul's life was victorious because he fulfilled the destiny God had purposed for his life. Now as we close, I want to speak to the body here at LSC. Everyone that is covenant connected here to LSC God has victory set for you. He has victory set for you. What did we say? We said that one of the ways to walk in victory is to see your goal. To see your goal. Your victory goal here. In this house is servanthood. It's servanthood. In Matthew chapter 18, the disciples, they were arguing on who was the greatest among them. And Jesus, he told them that the greatest among them is who would be servant of all. But the good thing about Jesus, he didn't just say a thing. He would also do a thing. So he just didn't say that they should be servant of all. He demonstrated it. And he demonstrated it by washing their feet. So, Jesus was saying to the disciples, if you want to really experience true victory, serve. Serve. See, servanthood is key to your victory. So how are you serving in this local body? How are you serving? See, when you begin 
to serve with your money by giving your tithes and your offerings, you will soon find yourself winning in the area of finances. When you start serving in the area of relationships and loving one another, you'll soon reap a winning harvest of love in your own life. So the more you press toward the goal of service, the more you'll find yourself moving into God's perfect will for your life. Now, the years that I was here in this ministry, I was faithful in serving. I was faithful in doing whatever needed to be done. Because that, 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 that was just a part of who I was. And because I was faithful in serving, things began to open up and things I began to see where God was wanting to take me. But see, you got to get in a position. And where God can allow you to see where he's trying to take you. So the reason I'm saying, if you are connected to this local body, serve. Don't sit in the seats. Don't just come on Sunday morning, hear the word, and then you go on about your own business. That's not why God placed you here. First of all, you got to realize where you at. If God placed you in this house, then this is a training ground. You got to realize where you at. God placed you here for training. Because this that's that this is what this house is. It's a training ground. So while I was here serving, it was a training ground for where God wanted to take me. But too many of us, we abort the mission because somebody made us upset. We get in our feelings. Because somebody didn't smile at me today. We get in our feelings because so and so passed by me and didn't speak to me. And God is saying, I placed you here because the purpose I have for your life, you got to go through here to get to the destiny I want to take you. And there have been many that have aborted the mission because somebody offended them. And saints of God, the Lord is saying, when are you going to get beyond that? When are you going to get beyond that? Too many of us, we go pouting to the Lord. Lord, so and so and so and so, they did such and such and such and such to me. And, some, and God is looking at some of us and saying, so? So? You have to realize, when you abort your mission, you got to repeat it.
So I don't care. You can go somewhere else. You still got to repeat the mission. You ain't going no further until you pass that test. So you might as well stay where you are and get what God wants you to get. Because saints of God, to, to, to move to your purpose, you got to have tough skin. And too many of us are wetbacks. We don't have tough skin. Because the very little fence, we ready to walk. Where's your victory? LSC, find your place where you're supposed to serve here and do it. And do it with a smile on your face. Even if, if you're ushering and you set a person at a certain place and they say, I don't want to sit here and looking at you all funny, you still smile and say, God bless you. Don't allow anybody else to throw you off the purpose that God has for your life. Because too many of us, we get off course because we allow people to get in the way of our purpose. And God never meant for another purpose, for another person to get in the way of your purpose. You got to move beyond these offenses. Because God's trying to take you somewhere. And he's using this ministry as your training ground. See, a lot of us, we don't look at See, see, God is not just setting you up for, for, uh, for victory spiritually. Your training ground is here even for your job. Because you got to know how to handle the people that you're working with. You got to know how to deal with them. See, too many of us, we, we, we sit here, we hear the word, we get fed, and we don't know how to apply it. We got, we, yes, we got a whole lot of word in us, but we're not using it for nothing. That's why God has to shake some of us up. To make you move. He has to push you. So you can move into the place where he wants you to be. So as you press toward the goal of servanthood, the power of God will open doors of opportunity that you never dreamed existed. Just because you're serving in the house. He will exalt you and he will give you visibility and influence in your community. He'll keep on propelling you towards your dream until one day you'll look around and you'll find that God, God, 
you are really allowing me to fulfill this purpose that you have called me to do in my life. It'll come into view so clear that you can see, okay, God, I know. I know what you're destined for me to do. And, and as you keep moving, as you keep moving, as you, pe- to, you keep pressing, you keep pressing on, and, 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 you keep, and, and you see the goal that's set before you, and God is saying, look, okay, this is the next place I want you to go. And you turn in the direction where God wants you to go, and you keep moving and keep moving. Yes, persecution is all around you. People are still stabbing you in your back, but you focused on the vision. You're focused on the goal. And you keep moving, you keep pressing, you keep pressing, you keep pressing, you keep moving, you keep moving in the direction God wants you to go. And then all of a sudden, it becomes clear. And God said, now, you're moving in the direction I want you to go. You're moving forward. You're moving to fulfill victory in your life. Yes, victory is yours. It's yours because God purposed it for you to have victory. But you got to do something in the process. You can't see it. You got to keep moving. A prophecy was prophesied over this house last night. That the upcoming year will be a year of rest. Now don't take that as an opportunity. For you to be just the the rest and do nothing. Because that's not what it means. It's a time for you to rest in God. To get in position. See, as you are serving here in this ministry, God will begin to position you. As you rest in him, he will position you and allow you to see where he, where he wants you to go. So don't take for granted what you have here in this house. Don't take your leaders for granted. No. You're not going to like everything they say. So what? I didn't like everything they said. But it didn't stop me from doing what, I, what God wanted me to do. Because I was determined. That I was going to be a good servant. So, as we, in this portion, keep moving. Keep pressing on. Because God has purpose and destiny. For every person that is sitting in here. And he wants you to. He, 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 he wants you to be empty. Just like Paul. At the end of his life. Where you can say. I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Stay on course. 
And as you stay on course, you will fulfill what God has set and destined for your life. Because your victory is on purpose. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on, let's rest on our feet. Amen. As we stand all over the sanctuary, we thank God for this 15th church anniversary. Here at Love Fellowship Church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God that has gone forth out of the man of God's mouth today. Our victory is on purpose. And because our victory is on purpose, because you have chosen us for a divine plan and divine purpose in our lives we can press toward that mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus if you're here today with every eye closed and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life want to extend the opportunity today for you to do just that. The Bible tells us that God chose us. Before we even were born, before we even came into this world, he'd already chosen you by name. And because God has chosen you, By giving you life today, he wants you to choose him and receive eternal life today. If that's your desire, and you say, Pastor Anthony, I know and I realize, I recognize that God has chosen me, and I'm ready to choose him by saying yes to his son, Jesus Christ and making Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. We want to give you opportunity to do so right now today. If that's you, simply raise your hand wherever you are in the sanctuary. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you because we know that God is able to move in mighty miraculous ways in your life today. Is there one today that's willing to say yes to Jesus? Simply raise your hand. After hearing the word of God today, perhaps you're ready to make a decision of quality to connect with Love Fellowship Church. If you believe that God is calling you to connect in membership with this local body, we're ready to receive you with love and open arms today. If that's your desire, raise your hand. We want to welcome you into this family of believers here at Love Fellowship Church. Thirdly, if you desire special prayer, we want to pray with you today. We want to pray for you today. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you are going through, God is able to move in your life today. If that's your desire, the altar is open for you. You can come now to the altar of God and receive prayer for whatever your situation, whatever things that you are facing in your life today. Is there one today? You desire prayer. You desire salvation. You desire to connect with Love Fellowship Church. In 
membership. The altar is open for you, even now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the truth of your word today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are well able to move in mighty and miraculous ways. We thank you for Pastor Rob and Pastor Tammy ministering your word in spirit and in truth. Now, God, let us take what we have received, what we have learned from you today, and let us apply it to our everyday life. We thank you that we are victorious on purpose. You have chosen to give us victory on today, and we bless your holy name. We praise and we honor your holy and your righteous name. And it is in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. At this time, we're going to ask our ushers to prepare for offering. Amen. If you desire an offering envelope, please raise your hand. We will make sure that you get those today. You can give in multiple ways. Those ways are on the screen desire to give here in live service you're making a check make it payable to love fellowship church or lfc we will give you an opportunity to give online as well the online giving process is on the screen we thank god for you coming out and celebrating with us here at love fellowship church today on our 15th church anniversary. Amen. If you are a first-time guest, please raise your hand. We want to acknowledge you today. Anyone here for the very first time here at Love Fellowship Church? Amen. Are there any first-time guests today? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for all of you and your families. We do have an announcement as far as our uh, couples Fellowship, it will be immediately following the benediction at the Hickory Tavern. That will be on Statesville Road and the corner of Statesville and Harris Boulevard. The Hickory Tavern Restaurant, we have a private room that's already prepared and made available. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and collect those offerings. Pastor Nate, you had a few words you wanted to say. Okay, I have two announcements. First of all, you all know that we do our Thanksgiving outreach about this time every year. So we are collecting sides. And I need for you all to bring your sides beginning next Sunday because we will have that outreach on the 18th of November. So sides, you know, you know what you want for Thanksgiving dinner. You know you want some stuffing. You know you want green beans or you want some... Uh, cabbage or whatever. But don't bring no cabbage though. But, you know, you can bring some canned sweet potatoes, things like that, some rolls. It's on the screen. Uh, we will also post that to our website as well and our Facebook page, all our social media. Please make sure you bring your sides. We're not asking you to bring any turkeys, but if you want to donate a turkey, you can uh, do that in the form of a payment. Because what we're going to do, we are going to go and pick up the turkeys. And then you will have an opportunity to serve, to put those bags together, on, I think on the 16th of November. We'll be ready to give those bags out to the families on the 18th. And our goal is 100 families. Also, coming up in January, everybody say January. We have our Leadership Equip Conference in Augusta, Georgia. We would love for you all to start preparing now 
to be there. It is the 24th through the 26th of January in Augusta, Georgia. Please look out for information on hotel and also the classes that will be offered. If you are a servant leader, and that means if you're covenantly connected to Love Fellowship Church, you should make plans to be there. Amen. Amen. And I just had one. Let me take the mic. I got. <laughs> had to share this when bishop gave that word yesterday about resting it, the holy spirit immediately took me to psalm 37 so i believe that every time that there's a prophecy there's a word amen amen and so when we look at psalm 37 and i'm not gonna read the whole thing i'm gonna start at verse 4 in the king james, new king james version it says delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. And then verse 7 is key. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Amen. So now you have word to go with what you heard. And you can stand in it and walk in your victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ushers, come on. Uh, Deacon, Deacon Reggie, come forward. You can rest on your feet as well. Amen. And we'll stretch our hands toward the basket. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, these offerings, these tithes, these gifts of love that have been sown here today at the Fellowship Church. We pray that you would bless them. We pray that you would multiply them. We pray that you would use them for your glory, for your honor, and for the saving of lost souls. Now, God, we thank you for every gift and every giver today that they would continue to see a hundredfold return in all that they have given. And it is in Jesus' 